Um, hello, everyone. My name is Blen, Blen Johannes. I'm from uh, YPFDJ Philadelphia. I'm also a member. <laughs> I'm also a member of Eritrean Hearing and Visually Impaired, also known as EHVI. We'll be doing a short presentation, um, and I'll introduce our members that will be presenting. So the f um, our first member is from um, Canada. This is um, Yordano, she's from Canada. She is our member on the um, visually impaired side. And this is Haile, he's our member for the um, hearing impaired side. Um, and this is Yerusalem Johannes, my little sister. She's also with us. Canada, Europe, Israel, and Eritrea. One second. Okay, sorry, it wasn't on. <laughs> so, our, our motto for HVI is that hearing and visual impairment is only a social challenge, meaning that it is only an obstacle that we have to overcome on a social level. And in in more depth than that, um, in Eritrean culture, not just hearing and visual impairment, but for most mental illnesses and physical illnesses, it's seen as almost like a curse. So our organization is to bring awareness, not just to visual and hearing impairment, but any mental and physical disabilities. So thank you for giving us a chance to present for a mass campaign on public awareness of hearing and visual impaired Eritreans. And a brief description of our agenda. First we'll be discussing about EHVI and then we'll go into hearing impairment and then visual impairment and Yeru will discuss um, our trip to Eritrea this summer and also how you can help. So about EHVI. So EHVI was founded in January 2013, 2015. Sorry, EHVI has members that span from the USA, Canada, Europe, Israel, and Eritrea. We are a 501c registered organization and based in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we are endorsed by the Embassy of Eritrea in the USA. We work with the Eritrean Ministry of Labor and Human Welfare. Um, we are an affiliate of the Eritrean Commission of Higher Education, and we are a member of the Eritrean National Association of the Blind, also known as ERINAD, and ERINAB, sorry, and we are also a member of the Eritrean National Association for the Deaf, and that's ERINAD. And lastly, we are a registered member of the National Council of Eritrean Americans, who is hosting this year's conference. A little background, we were inspired at the end of 2014 through a casual discussion with our chair member, Araya, who's backstage, and Yordanos. We officially launched January 13th, 2015. Our bylaws were written and approved, and our founding members contributed towards major expenses. We started building a website. We got our legal 501c document sent out. And an intro letter of, from EHVI was sent to the Embassy of Eritrea. 
and an official delegate was sent to Eritrea also. We are endorsed by the Eritrean Ministry of Labor and Human Welfare, and we are registered with North America Council Committee. So this summer, 24 of our members traveled to Eritrea. Um, we had an official visit to the Ministry of Labor and Human Welfare, official visit to Eridab and Erinad. We had a picnic in the Keren School for the Deaf and a picnic in the Abraha Bahta School for the Blind in Asmara. We donated eight laptops with a special JAW software, um, one embrasser, which is uh, a braille printer, and we also donated 300 t-shirts um, to the Asmara School and the Keren School for our picnics. So our goals are to raise public awareness, research and learn on impairment challenges, funding support from public and corporations, um, knowledge support from academic institutions, and technology support from industries. EHVI aims at advancing the moral, education, development, and economic growth of hearing and visually impaired Eritreans. So our scheduled activities um, to have our goals is to have at least 500 members by the end of 2015. Right now we have about 100 and our goal by the end of this conference is to have 200 more. Um, if not, we're all going to be fired so you guys should join. <laughs> um, um, and our fundraising program also to approach academic institutions, ask industries to help approach state slash federal institutions continued public promotions and send learning materials to Eritrean students as well as um, eyeglasses to Eritrean students. So the challenges of a hearing and or visually impaired Eritrean are insurmountable and cannot be dealt individually because they are substantial burdens on their families as well as the entire society. The social stigma is that a child facing a lifelong blindness and deafness has formidable changes to, to lead daily life. As for blind and deaf Eritreans, they face additional stigma and marginalized stemming from unreasonable lack of social awareness. Many of the sources of Eritrean and or visually impairment challenges can be tackled at early stage by visiting medical facilities, accessories, and simple follow-ups. The solution, however, once a person is challenged with hearing and or visual impairment, life can be simplified with, social, with complete social awareness, education, technology, and persons challenged um, can be productive citizens. What is being done? As a caring and far-sighted society, Eritrea is working tirelessly for equal rights of education for blind and deaf students with lots of challenges. As a human resource conscious society, Eritrea, Eritrea is on its way to build productive citizens despite the challenges of hearing and or visual impairment. And now, Haile will talk about the hearing impaired segment. I say good afternoon. Uh, now I'm going to sign for you. Uh, what is the actual? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I represent uh, the deaf Eritreans. Uh, and we are a linguistic community. And so it is uh, our right, oh sorry, <laughs> it is our right to sign and to introduce the sign language for all hearing people. Uh, now I would like you just take the feel of deafness. Deafness itself is invisible handicap, but many may not feel it. And so, let us take some a feeling experience. I would like you to shut your ear, everybody. Okay. Eritrea. Okay, now open your ear. 
How do you feel? That's my life since I was 16 years old. It's very difficult, but deafness itself is not disability. It is a challenge of life. And I learned a lot from it in my life. And that's where I am here now. I can talk with you with sign language. This is my first time to sign to a group of deaf, of hearing people, Eritreans, and, and I'm very, very, very proud of that. Okay, what can we do? What can we do? Eritrean hearing and visually impaired citizens at an early age need to be introduced to the basic assistance technology that will lead to the educational success and become power users technology. And this technology will help total awareness of the hearing and a visual impairment in our society. Number two inclusion and not marginalization. Number three, acceptance and stigmatization. Educational growth and productive and social economic growth. Uh, here, Impaired technology, what kind of technology do we have now? Sign language is a common technique for the deaf. However, there are different <coughs> standards in the world. Hearing aids are also economically used. However, there are limitations in their effectiveness. Now, with the help of a new technology, the people can do everything. Oh, sorry. And the hearing impaired uh, uh, have uh, perception, except a graphic and picture. Okay. A hearing impaired technology. Modern phones are now common to convert speech to text for the deaf, which are almost absolute and hard find abundant in Eritrea. That's Eritrea, okay? You remember sign for Eritrea? But uh, most of the time we make Eritrea to uh, the, the, like this, because it looks like triangle. <laughs> uh, modern video phones are now common to convert speech to picture for the deaf, which are hard and found abundantly in Eritrea. Um, Latest motion text converter technology are in the mobile apps for the deaf, which are unthinkable to find in Eritrea at present. Latest Google, associated Google, 
glass for the deaf and mobile data connection wearable technology that converts vision to hearing in common are common and emerging, which are unthinkable to find in Eritrea in first world future. Okay, thank you. So now our Secretary Yordanos will be speaking about the visual impaired segment of EHVI. Uh, my name is Yordanos Abraham. I'm from uh, Canada, Alberta. I lost my eyesight um, when I was completely blind, 18 years old, going to 19, and I, but completely I lost it on 19, but uh, I uh, s s quit school, I had a problem seeing the blackboards, and quit school uh, when I was 13 years old, old uh, grade 6. So I, had, I didn't go back to school since then. Uh, when I came to Canada, 89, I started going to school. But when I started school in Canada even, when I went to ASL, uh, second language English, uh, I used that verbally and going with assistant uh, or volunteer uh, lady comes with me, explained everything by uh, uh, by uh, just reading the books and try to answer the questions. Then for after a year, I start uh, learning Braille, uh, Braille uh, with a slate and stylus. Then start computer, Apple computer. It's, uh, it used to be Apple computer, but the software, uh, the it's called echo. It is very complicated to understand the computer speech. So it was very complicated, uh, but after a while I get used to it and learning side to side. Uh, Braille and computer as, uh, at the same time, the language, English language too. So, Gradually, by plus, I have a uh, what do you call it? dictionary, and the dictionary was so big, thick, like a uh, album picture, and see, uh, 23 volume, and uh, it's in a big shelf. Every time when I go to school, to classes, from class one to class. I used to take this uh, shelf, 26 volume uh, dictionary. It was so hard, plus to find it al its alphabetical order, to find the word what I want to learn. It was difficult. Then right after it came uh, Webster Dictionary in Language Master, it's, it has a speech. So it became very easy, it was portable, I can put it in my uh, backpack. So the, these things, when I see, uh, when I went back home, they're still working with uh, Slate and Stylus. And when I talked to one of the assistant teachers for the visual impaired in Adraih, and he was explaining to me. So when I came here, I was just thinking, those people, they need to have a recording while the teacher is uh, lecturing. They can take a note. Uh, it would be nice, or a little laptop or a note taker. So it's very hard to uh, get them put, uh, to get there. 
And if we can help those people, it would be nice. I'm just trying to convince you. And, uh, thank you. So one of the softwares that we have and that we put onto our um, computers that we sent back to Eritrea this summer is called JAWS and it's basically a screen reader. So we're going to use an example of that right now. He's my friend, though. <laughs> I am JAWS. I am friends with your Davos Abraham. We are very close friends. I read written text for your Davos. Your Davos is totally blind, but she is super smart, and I am really happy to read for her. Your Davos is a secretary of the Eritrean Hearing and Visually Impaired Nonprofit Organization. Education is a very must in tackling the challenges of hearing and visual impairment. An individual in a society can compete and lead a normal life without education. Eritrea prides in its human capacity and effort focused on the Enhancing educational technological growth is essential. Now, with the help of knowledge and social awareness, everyone can be a formidable workforce. One, technology is a force that has a potential to transform ways in which we conduct basic activities of our daily life. Two, in today's world, everyone needs to be technology literate. Therefore, it is a given fact, especially for hearing and visually impaired people. Your Davos tells me I have to make it short for now. I know you are in a big conference, and I wish you a great success. Please support Eritrean Hearing Visually Impaired. It is a wonderful organization. Good day. Um, your Donalds will go a little bit more in depth no. about our um, okay. oh, sorry. about our um, technology. Your Donalds is going to go a little bit more in depth about the technologies that we have for the um, visual impaired. Braille printers. Printers or embosser. Yeah, this is a braille printer embosser. Jaws. Yeah. Oh, Jaws. Uh, the the uh, the one you just heard is, is in the name of the speech package is Jaws. The screen reader. Embosser. Uh, embosser. It's a printer. A printer for a braille, you can attach with the laptop or computer, then it will print braille, and if you have regular printer, it will print out print. So next, um, Yeru will be talking about EHVI's trip to Eritrea this summer. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Yeru Salem, I'm from Philly. Um, I recently joined EHVI with my sister, Blen, uh, a couple of friends, and my mom. And we were officially the youngest members when we first joined, <laughs> only, what, 16, and then our one cousin was 14. But uh, we already started collecting new members, so now our official youngest member is 13. Um, Um, basically with this organization it was a lot about what we wanted to do so this past summer was when we got to put that in full action so throughout the school year we were uh, working on setting up computers such as these and we were installing JAWS so we would be able to uh, donate them to the ministry when we got to Eritrea so um, in this first the top left picture was um, our official day when we got to meet um, the, when we went to the Ministry of Welfare and Human Resources. We were able to donate, as you can see in the top right, the big machine that has the red stripe over it, that's the embosser. Um, we also donated watches for um, blind. They speak the time to you. so we were able to donate a lot of stuff that would be helpful. And it wasn't a lot, but it was a good start for our first year. Um, so. And the bottom right 
pictures, the bottom right and bottom left pictures were from when we went to Karen for our picnic. We basically um, started out this summer with two picnics, one in Karen, um, as Blen was saying, and one in the Abraha Bahta school. So this is from Karen when we were donating. Um, as you can see, that's my dad, Afar in the front row. Uh, he was kind of running it for us. And in the next pictures, okay. Uh, this is basically just the picnic at Karen. You see, um, in all these pictures, these are all our own members. We have members from California, Philly, uh, DMV. Basically, we we're reaching out. We have Toronto in here. Um, it was just a great experience overall, just coming together, meeting new people who uh, have endured these challenges in their lives, and they were so happy to meet us. It was really inspiring. And then, as you see, we had these blue t-shirts. Blen has one with her right now. Um, it was like a key to the, like to the club or something. You were exclusive when you had these shirts, so I remember we would be walking around Asmara, and there would be kids pointing at us because we had the shirt. We weren't even wearing it, but they had it under, and they were just like, hey, I know you. So it was really interesting to see that, and it moves you. Like, you just get really happy inside when you see something like that to know that you are a part of a start of something. <laughs> um, these are more pictures with everybody in their EHVI shirts. Uh, from Abraha Bahta School. We had uh, performers in the top right corner, um, and then our graduates in the bottom right from the Keren School for the Deaf. And for Blen. So next. Next, we'll be talking about what you guys can do to support. To tackle and work together, Eritreans must be partners with hearing and visual impaired Eritreans. Support EHVI that aspires to enhance social awareness, nurture educational development, continue with technology transfer, and foster social and economic growth. You can also help by campaigning for awareness of hearing and visually impaired Eritreans, and that can be something as simple as sharing a story that you've heard of someone who's um, shared their experience as a, a visually or hearing impaired Eritrean in Eritrea, how they dealt with their um, experiences and everything like that. That's how we actually um, first heard about this organization, through a simple Facebook post sharing someone's story. Um, you can become a member by, um, our membership is only $100 a year, and it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't, because most of our, for the majority of our funds that goes towards everything that we donate to Eritrea and to keep our organization running is strictly based off of men member contributions. So to become a member, um, you can register online. We have a secure online registration and contribution. We have registration cards for pledge or registration. And we also have receipts with us here um, for any cash donations that anyone would want to make. Um, and EHVI members are always available via telephone or personal contacts. Um, before we get into the next slide, everybody got these brochures uh, before lunch, right? Does everybody have any? We have a lot of extra. <laughs> um, as we were saying before, 200 members before conference ends, or else we're all fired. Uh, <laughs> so EHVI's uh, okay. commitment. Oh, sorry. This book is a uh, um, is a study on deafness and. The reason I uh, this I I prepare the reason is um um oh, about deafness awareness. You know that uh, in order to solve the problem of deafness, first of all we have to understand what deafness is. 
what is causes, what is effects, and how can we solve it? The big problem we have in Eritrea is we don't have, we do not inherit it from the past. That's from Italian rule, from British, or from Ethiopians, that there was no any deaf school in Eritrea. So we don't have any basic information about deafness in terms of education, in terms of rehabilitation. So AHVI entrusted me to prepare and to study the cause of deafness and how it can be solved. After six months, I prepared this research paper. The goal is to solve the problem of deafness in deliberate manner. First of all, we have to understand what deafness is. Simply, we don't depend on humanitarian need, but what is deafness? What is its causes? As you know, that deafness is not visible handicap. It is invisible. That's why the problem of deafness is not solved yet. But at the same time, also, as I said earlier, deafness also, we see it, even for myself, as a challenge, as something or as an opportunity to learn. So this paper work is to be distributed to all agencies who have a working relationship with deaf people. And I hope this is, it took me about six months to prepare this paper. It is based on my experience as a vocational rehabilitation, as a teacher of the deaf and autistic children. The whole study is not only based on uh, American or European experience, it's also based in, uh, on our culture, because we have different perception about deafness. And this I incorporated with uh, the world global. And I prepared this, so I hope uh, to bring some change in our society. Thank you very much. Okay. So to end, um, we'll very briefly state HVI's commitment, and that's despite all the foreseeable challenges, the road to fulfill our goals may take longer and the path may be tricky. However, HVI vows to meet its aspirations, vision, and objectives. And with your support and active participation, HVI will meet its targets. And oh, <laughs> um, from what I've heard today, everyone, especially youth, want to get really involved in how they can help Eritrea. Everyone says, oh, what can I do in the summer? I don't want to go just to party and do whatever. I actually do want to give back when I go to Eritrea. And this is honestly a perfect opportunity. It made my summer worth it. It was a great experience for me, so I encourage everyone to join. So thank you for your time and attention. I think they deserve a standing ovation, yeah? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so today we were talking about professional contribution. So Mr. Haida is going to Eritrea also to learn. Hands up. 
So we were talking about everybody to help Eras huh? support Eras hands everywhere. So one of the things that Mr. Haile will be uh, going to Eras very shortly and learn from them and see what needs uh, uh, they have and also understand and how they can help. And uh, thank you again. We appreciate it for all uh, the wonderful things they work. Uh, next. Um, our